Tiffany, it's very nice that we have the opportunity to have this conversation together and our friend Aurélie asked us to make the interview. We're going to speak English because we're not used to speak English, but we're going to try to get into English so that whoever listens to us, maybe more people can understand English. Um, and so just to introduce the conversation, it's just to say that um, I'm Yuma Mudra. I'm the founder of Danza Duende uh, International Network. And now I'm also directing with um, Haji, Michel Haji, the University of Corizofi. And you are Tiffany Gatso. You can present yourself uh, mm -hmm. also as soon as I introduce mm -hmm. a little bit why we're talking together. A few years uh, ago, uh, Michael Ash for Dakinia's Art required that we could have a conversation online that was in 2015. Yeah, 2015. And I was very happy to meet you because I knew by internet your paintings about Dakinis, but also your free way of painting. And I was uh, attracted to it. So I was very happy Michael asked us to have this conversation. And at that point, I remember telling you, next time I must interview you, because this, yeah, this time you interview me. And we never did that, yeah. so now we're in 2018. And, um, and then we met after the interview, it was by Skype. At that time we didn't know each other. Then we really met in Portugal during uh, the festival I organized in three years. Then you invited me to Brazil, and now here we are in Spain. Back in Spain. So um, the idea is that we can have this conversation in the sense that you really talk about you, about your art, about your path, about your story. And um, so um, I invite you maybe to just first talk about how you um, present yourself to people on the camera and then we, we talk. Okay. Yeah? <coughs> well, I'm uh, Tiffany Gatzel and I'm born in Brazil. And yeah, and then my path, well, I always had the drive to, to paint, but um, I didn't know what, but it was there. And the only thing that I was very passionate was horses. So I lived in a farm and I had the horses and we were many kids. And so I started drawing because I looked at horses and I wanted to draw. But still it was a driving side that I didn't know why I was drawing the horses. Why? You know? But still, just painting the way I, I knew. And um, in 2018, uh, no, when I was 18 years old, um, my parents, who are also in the spiritual quest, and I'm very thankful for them, because of, because of them I was really into into the spiritual path in a natural way, it wasn't like now I discover what's God. God was maybe always a word that was at home. So in 2000, the year 2000, um, we made a travel um, by motorhome from Germany because my mom is German, my father is Brazilian. And um, she had a vision that she had to find uh, she had to go on a pilgrimage mm -hmm. uh, to China. And she had just dreams and she would follow it. So she bought a motor home in Germany and was going to drive. And she told me and my boyfriend at the time, well, if you want to come, you take care of yourself. And so um, another friend of us came and we also bought a motor home, very old, for $1,000. And um, so we, we, by then, had two cars and we drove all through Russia until we got to Mongolia. And in Russia I saw for the first time the Byzantine art, mm. the Orthodox mm -hmm. art. And for me it was... Um, it wasn't that I think it's uh, aesthetically beautiful, it wasn't that kind of attraction. It was like, that makes sense. They are, they are doing... They are creating form to tell me something, and what they are telling it's about God, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm, I okay, I want to learn that. 
but it seems too uh, masculine society. <laughs> I couldn't of really. Course, yeah. I didn't know where to start from, so we just continue our journey. And uh, entering Mongolia, uh, five of us uh, just crossing the, the border of Mongolia in the middle of nowhere, nowhere uh, in Altai, which is a very strong place, really. And we just cry and cry was like, you know, we have the sensation that the soul is inside our body. But I had the feeling that my soul was there and my body mm -hmm. arrived. And so when I saw Tanka painting inside the temples, dusty temples, so it had that feeling of I've been here and my steps are there. Yeah, like rec recognition it of something really familiar to yes. you, even though it was not. Yes, mm -hmm. very much. And again, it wasn't that kind of attracting, uh, oh, this is beautiful. No, it was actually too colorful and the wrathful deities <laughs> would I didn't like them, you know, so, but it was like I knew who they were, and it was it wasn't also a decision like I'm gonna do this. It was like it's obvious. Mm -hmm. it just, so I I entered the, the school of tanka painting in um, in uh, Ganda Monastery in Ulaanbaatar. They accepted me, but no, they were not so pleased to have a young Brazilian girl there. With no money, so yes. that means... And especially that a woman. East, and they were all men only. And the first week, the, the, the director, he said to me, look, uh, maybe it's better that, you know, you go to India because it's better for a woman, it's not so cold. <laughs> and it wasn't winter yet, so yeah, sure. I didn't know what was coming. You know. So he, he convinced me. And, but I couldn't just go from Mongolia to India, I just didn't have the money to, to go and live there. So um, we left the car and got the Trans-Siberian, another adventure going back. And, uh, and so I worked and studied in Germany for three years. Mm -hmm. And that prepared me a lot then to go to, to India. Yes, like you took, uh, you took some... You took some time to get ready, no? Yeah. Yes, and it was so Good. important because in Germany I learned about discipline. <laughs> yes, because you came from Brazil. Yes. We should remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, I have to work. And I was in Munich, it's an expensive place, and so I had to save money. That meant I would go by bicycle everywhere so I wouldn't get the tram, the train to... to to save money, I wouldn't go to parties anymore because alcohol was <laughs> expensive too. And uh, so that, and I didn't have much friends because it's hard. I was only studying and working. So I also disconnected from my friends in, in Brazil. And, and that taught me a lot because once then I was accepted in Norbulinka in India. And I was the, the first foreigner, the first Westerner accepted there. Um, they also weren't so comfortable about that because they only spoke Tibetan and their interest was about uh, preserving the Tibetan culture. culture for the Tibetans. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, and they, the way they taught, it's uh, very, of course, very different from the Western style. So finally when I got into the school, um, we sat on the floor, we draw on the floor, and to come to talk with the teacher, you had to bow. And the teacher, was, he was very kind, always smiling at me, but he didn't call me by my name. For the first whole year, I was in Chipumo, which means uh, like gringo, you know, like a girl, western girl. So he thought I was just a tourist. You right. white face. Yeah, no, no, I was trained, <laughs> yeah. maybe not serious. And I saw him teaching everybody, but not me. But because I, I got the German <laughs> training, I'm like, I never doubted. And more than learning about the proportions that Tanka painting has, and so, so exact, and you know, all that, 
I think what he taught me by then, that today I understand, is about really polishing my my ego. It's kind of like you really have to want to do tanka. And it's not about um, completing uh, a deity. It's not about having a tanka. It's about you polishing and leaving your identity. It's about your mind. Your mind, yeah. Because if I understand well, if my own experience is that sacred art is also not signed usually. There's no name on it. And whoever is uh, using the, the sacred art, may it be sculpture or painting as a support for practice, mm -hmm. is like having the support also of how this artist is able to relate to sacredness, the, the, deep, the deepest sacredness, you know, how much in this art, in this painting or in this culture there is something deep. Yeah. So it does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yes. Because today that I'm teaching Tanka for more than 10 years, a lot of people come, but it's, uh, what, it, what drives them is curiosity. That's not enough. That's maybe the seed, but it's not enough. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I still teach a lot of people, but maybe hundreds of people that really made workshop with me. I really count like two people who, who said, who took the long path. Yes. Because I feel Tibetans are like this. You have a short path and you have a long path. Or you have a difficult and an easy path. They choose the difficult path. <laughs> Just uh, because it makes me want to talk about a lot of things, so I have yeah. to choose somehow. <laughs> no, it gives me a lot of desire to talk yeah. about a lot, a lot of different uh, aspects. Yes. But now really concentrating on you. Um, it's interesting because you talked about horses. Mm. And uh, we have horses here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I noticed that a lot of places where I have been... Uh, uh, doing things the horses uh, came and also I I have not a relationship uh, physically with horses but there is a uh, inner relationship with the horse very strong in my life very important so it's very interesting to hear you talk about horses because I didn't know that your first insight was horse but actually when I did see your paintings uh, on Dakinya's art because this is how we met and also Michael Ash, I started to talk with him because of um, the fact that what he was publishing on internet was so often things I liked. Mm -hmm. So at one point we talked yeah. because I thought I like a lot of things he's publishing, yeah. you know, yeah. so let's have a conversation. Yeah. No? And, um, and then I noticed that I also liked your paintings that were not tankas. Yeah. So I was interested in this relationship and you had a lot of horses going on there, no? Uh, Dakinis that were a little bit like becoming free from the tanka and then the horses. And then it was like, uh, like something living between the very uh, strict discipline and order of tankas, which I think is important somehow, because as a dancer, I can also relate to the importance of uh, understanding uh, deeper than our own um, expression. And also how your expression with the painting can be quite, uh, how you say, um, how you say in English, um, daring. Mm. This daring that actually is very strong in your history, mm. it is strong in your personality, mm. and it is also uh, obvious on your painting. So this relationship between a daring quality of freedom and a discipline that is more like uh, in the harmony of order and something that we, as you say, polish ourselves. You know? um, on another hand, maybe this freedom is also present in, in Japanese art or in poetry or in uh, different uh, cultures, this idea that maybe the spontaneous expression could also meet the same egolessness, egolessness, excuse me, but it's more, it's difficult, it's difficult. very difficult. Yeah. And then I would like to make you um, questions about this also related to our relationship because we did work on the flower of life mm -hmm. and uh, you remember all this yes. uh, painting yes. relationship to color on one side, the flower of life coming from Islamic mandala and how we could be free joining together the light of colors, abstract, the flower of life 
the lines and then something personal. And so my, I know it's not an easy question, but my uh, question to you is, where do you feel the core of all of, all of this in your life? in your path as artist, and also in the technique for an artist, whatever art we practice between discipline and freedom. Yes, you can be, yeah. you can just well, actually, let yourself I've, go. Yeah, <laughs> like we talked before about chaos and order and uh, discipline and freedom and how, how it, this, this came to me and how it meets now to you, because you also follow that idea. And so uh, I feel that I did only tanka painting then for many, many, many years, and uh, it gave me that technique, that that sharpness. That this, if I want to do a thin line, I can do a thin line, and this takes time, and it takes discipline. But at the same time, something was boiling in me, and at that time, you know, much younger, I think I. I I haven't gone through all the wildness of my being. And wildness also in the bad sense, mm -hmm. thing, you know, of like take totally out of control emotions coming. And um, just right after I, I had my, my son and becoming a mother and, and having this project of painting a temple and then separating, getting divorced and uh, falling in love again, uh, it gave me so many emotions. I just had no control. I couldn't do a thin line anymore. It's like if you had two of you. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The and nice I, lady. And, and I had to, to look at that. The wild lady, yes. Suddenly, and it was nice. It wasn't a nice person. Mm -hmm. And I had to look at it. So I couldn't um, be... Uh, do a art, impersonal art like Tanka it is, because Tanka takes your identity aside and you just connect to the divine. Suddenly I, I had this opportunity to, let's say, get very personal. Yes. And it was then I started painting like in big canvases at the same time I was doing the temple. And what I felt because I was doing big, the gesture of like bah, putting energy on that and not only the energy but how the colors really enter my mind and was soothing me. And um, after I expressed everything and I felt the calmness and then expressed again. and the, So I really found this, this rhythm kind of thing. Yes, so this like a breath. Uh -huh. and quietness. So to really feel quietness, I had to l let it go, let it explode, and let life just burn down to zero ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the horses coming, they, they were so clear in my dreams and everything, because I felt like, I, not in my childhood, not, I not only drew the horses, but I used to ride every day, every day without the saddle or anything. I really loved the, the animal to be on to be that. And I felt again it had been many years I didn't ride anymore, but I had the dreams I was in a, I was in a horse out of control and I was so uh, fearful. I had no control and then the branches were mm -hmm. coming in my face and I was trying that was the physical feeling I had with all the emotions of of passion, greed, uh, jealousy, uh, doubt, uh, I had no control, they were just there. So the horse came again and then the painting taught me. I didn't know what the horse was until I painted and saw that I painted the, a woman like getting the horse by the hair and that was uh, what I was trying. And then the painting was telling me, I said, wow, okay, what is that? And then the horses were taking out a shape. And too many years later, I drew, I did a painting that is called No Struggle, which is the, the horse, he's still very wild painted. Mm -hmm. But the woman is very softly with mm -hmm. her hands. I think I've seen it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's at home there. I think, I think I've seen it in your house. And yeah. she comes and eats on her hand. 
And it's and it was nice we talking yesterday, I think, and uh, just kind of I got something that the emotions when we try to control them with discipline or with a method or with a technique like now I'm going to meditate and breathe and use all this technique to control the horse doesn't like that the horse will like I don't know you who are you so it's with emotions it's just like the animal just if the horse is wild just sit by the side do nothing let the horse know your smell mm -hmm. know you and slowly trust you and coming near and without grabbing him just offer your hand and then you make and then naturally the horse will be in peace with you and that requires a lot of trust and that was another painting that i did which is a woman just folding her, her eyes and opening yes. an eye here. This is the one I actually I noticed. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. A lot of people connected to that because I think we want to trust. Mm -hmm. We want to trust to do nothing and be alert. The horse is there and watching, but you let your hands open. Sometime it will come near you, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. Such a not knowing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. could be uncomfortable, but you can also find comfortable if you're lucky. <laughs> it can be comfortable, and um, so this is how I relate the um, painting with the emotions and how mm -hmm. they teach me in my path. But soon I was missing the the, the body part. So when I was painting, I felt this necessity to to, to put this energy, and um, I couldn't find any teacher, let's say an art teacher, that taught me that taught me art with this intention. Mm -hmm. Many years later, then I found Alok, which is the Chinese uh, calligrapher. He lives in the States and he was doing Zen painting, mm -hmm. but also with uh, the uh, dynamic meditation. So I thought, wow, this is a good combination and I liked him. So we met and uh, he's my dear teacher. He can look in my eyes and tell me that my stroke is out of a, a habit. And it's not coming from not knowing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's always calling me to that point of not knowing, which is sitting next to the horse. And see yes. what happens. Mm -hmm. See if he comes to your hand or not. You don't know. So having somebody tell you, like, yes, this is coming first thought. First, first thought, thought, best thought. thought. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. And it's not grabbing the horse. You are not grabbing. So subtle, and of course, practice, know your ways, know how. I mean, and not knowing too <laughs> is, is paradoxical. And uh, when we met, everything came together because you were doing that painting, mm -hmm. uh, and then you were bringing the dance and the breathing and Buddhism. And I don't consider myself like. A, a, conservative Buddhist because of course it's like a, I feel that the path to God is so intimate so what I don't in, understand in, the word in, intimate? intimate intimate yes intimate. intimate actually I don't think Buddha was Buddhist you know yeah <laughs> I don't so. think so yeah. so it's no problem <laughs> You know, whoever whoever exactly. needs to say the word Buddhist is just yeah. not practicing yeah. because the practice is not about yeah. labeling anyway. Yeah. yeah. But it's 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 easy sometimes. So, yes, I'm a Buddhist. Yeah. <laughs> but if I if I can express what is my path, it's more about it's like a marriage. Each one has its own marriage, and it's very different from you know from each other. So I feel it's it's about learning how to relate to God 
like a it's like a consciousness that guides you until it, it's not guidance anymore it's just one thing to be to, to, yeah it's the the the, the space, like you see. You know. So the question Aurélie asks, Aurélie told me, can you please ask Tiffany a question? And she said, uh, can you ask her the question, what is art? Do you think you are answering this question when you say this? Well, of course, art can be many things. And I will say, of course, my personal view. And um, for me, art, yes, is my my religion that's it. but you said marriage you said marriage uh, marriage yes you said marriage, marriage. yes it's like a marriage yeah, but maybe yeah, religion is marriage mar i don't know a marriage to yeah. to god and this is how you make love because religion comes from also link no yes mm -hmm. so that's what you you mean when you said marriage you like you mean like feeling a link like um I'm trying to make you talk. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The marriage, in the sense, yes. what I'm saying is, uh, when I say I don't have a religion, or like I'm not a Buddhist, spite, I do follow Buddhism, and I do study Buddhism, and uh, I'm very grateful for all the teachers and His Holiness. Um, but the path itself is like a marriage, which you, you have to sense what the other one is saying to you and the other one is existence you know so how how i can make how can i relate to it this is a big you know m marriage in this sense Th does this relate for you to the word samaya or not i'm just uh, yeah. trying to well because as i for you I yeah, said, as huh? i understand samaya is your 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 intention your promise promise mm -hmm. yes um, i don't think it is because um i do that without doing the samaya it's just how it is and my samaya is to be faithful to that marriage maybe? because yes. the marriage itself is naturally yes is there but to be faithful not corrupted yes okay so that's it yes, yes okay and so, like for you, art in this case is to live this path and let it uh, transform you, something like that? Yeah, if I can put in a few words, is art, it, it offers you a path of mirror also. Because mm -hmm. every time you express and you have the physical, mm -hmm. it can be a painting, Return. a structure, it can be dance, mm -hmm. you, you, you look back to yourself again. Yeah, it talks back to you. It talks mm -hmm. back to mm -hmm. you. And when it talks back to you, you can hear it as a voice of wisdom, which is not you anymore, or who you think you are. is not you anymore. It's, it can be, you know, whatever it is talking to you back. So it's also an opportunity to be always open to be, okay, you do something and you, you hear what it tells you back, mm -hmm. which is not you anymore. And until you become that, and it's no duality anymore, then it's not, you know, I mean, we are in a dual world, we cannot express in yes. a not dual way. But we still perceive the consciousness and as a part, you know, or God apart. But that's okay, too, mm -hmm. I think, and that's how we do art, playing with mm -hmm. that duality. Uh, like, um... Uh, of the many things I think about when I listen to you, um, I'm coming a little bit backwards because I think um, it has to do with both of us and with yeah. the conversation and maybe why we make these movies yes. also, no? and the Dakini yes. as art. Of course, Dakini is not about women, but on another hand, they are represented as female. No? Um, usually, as I understood, are related to the, um, the richness of uh, Space itself has been uh, not um, something, no, yeah. as just, as just as you said, not knowing yeah. this this space, no. But on another hand, when you talked about discipline and you talked about um, the wildness inside, which I really believe is for all human beings like that, probably. Uh, maybe not all human beings have this relationship of clarity to oneself, but we all have these kind of different feelings something inside of us that wants to love and be loved and 
is like aspiring for peace and a piece of what the, a piece of us that doesn't give a shit about nobody, <laughs> no, and I, not even about oneself, yeah. no. And um, of course, it's possible only in a, in a certain uh, environment. So I think it's a lot. Uh, this is really something that everybody uh, nowadays is confronted to. We do have a spiritual drive. A lot of people. We do have. Uh, uh, honesty about the spiritual drive, many of us. But we're living in very different contexts. It changed very quickly. Whoever was living in Japan, whoever was living in Tibet, whoever was living in Mongolia or in Russia or in the United States, it's different. And women and men have a different body. Uh, we probably uh, don't have a problem of gender in the deepness of ourselves. I don't believe in the deepness there is an, any gender problem. But uh, on the surface, there is a gender um, quality of uh, perception of things and of yeah. life. And so, as you said, maybe for a man living in Japan to use his warrior quality to make his horse become a friend and transform as Musashi or something like that, did exist, or at, at least we do have relate about this, no? And probably it does give fruits like Aikido, uh, Yoshiba. Um, there is a lot of uh, martial ways of doing religion or of doing art or of yeah. doing uh, martial itself, war, no? Everything. But it is, uh, like we would say, a uh, masculine body way of dealing with horses. <laughs> I'm not making any judgment. I'm just yes. uh, trying yes. to uh, clear yes. f for for myself and for everybody these different things. And when, as you said, when I feel myself as a woman and related since many years with women and with feminine um, dance and wildness, and my um, concern about wisdom without avoiding the nature and what not evolved in what you call wildness, but in the same time maybe not being victim of my own mm -hmm. uh, destructive <laughs> drive. Um, I really think that the the, femi the feminine path needs uh, uh, models. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we are models, but I'm saying that we c can um, provide um, slowly the possibility of women creating models that are not models because they are so beautiful or they're such a great goddess or they're so, I don't know, maybe maybe it's more simple than that. It's that how do we relate with the horse? And how, <laughs> how this horse, as you said, no, how this horse in the same time is wild. So it's very uh, something not in a book, yeah. you know, not something juicy as I was talking uh, before, something that really we feel that like 10 years ago I had this relationship with my horse yeah. and now the relationship with the horse is becoming maybe something that the horse is still free yeah. but I feel happy about not destroying myself and everybody. Yeah. So this is um, also I would like to make you this, it's like our last question because we're getting to the end of the, the time. We have like five, ten minutes more. Um, how the, does this uh, idea, and I, I come a little bit back, a little bit back to our own relationship yes. with mandala, yes. chaos and order. Yes. How can we uh, think that maybe in an intuitive path, all of us, relating to art as something that gives us feedback? Yes but sharing some understanding to help each other. Yeah. Uh, how is uh, the sense of structure, order and discipline helping in the another hand to be completely intuitive and completely free and completely uh, cre creative about yeah. it? Getting to know my body is getting to know the horse too. And I think, um, I think I thought I knew about my body, but I had no idea. And I still don't. I really don't. And the body, we think it's only the physical, you know, only what I see. But the body, I mean, like you, you thought, it's pulsating it. It has our own intelligence. Like it's pumping blood, it's functioning digestion, 
uh, without me, the me knowing it. So I think studying and living away only, uh, only of what I know intellectually or psychologically, it's uh, not enough. It's not complete. It's totally not complete. And uh, I think also in the spiritual world, uh, or you are a yogi, <laughs> or you are, you know, or you put yourself in a discipline. You know, there is a tendency of splitting. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Or like, oh, I am spiritual, so I don't need this and that, my body, and and uh, I really want to feel that everything in my life is inclusive. I can live anything. Mm -hmm. We know. Um, in a sense, in a sense, in a more open morality, but not in an intellectual way. I, I, excuse me, I just didn't understand open morality. I didn't understand. Yeah, um, um, I didn't understand actually the English itself. Yeah, yeah open morality. So, I mean, the moral sense, I, I, I mean, like, like for example, in Brazil, we never go naked in the river. Oh yes, we just yes. came back. Everybody very happy, and there was innocence. I mean, here in Spain, you yeah, could yeah, be naked. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And we were like kids again. Let and me tell you know. something. I, I was in another spot of the river. Yeah. Uh, we were the same place. We didn't know. But actually, I was there a little bit before the river. Before and the poli two policemen came. There were two policemen, uh, Catalan policemen, with all the guns, all of it. And they were just like that. And they didn't know I was there. So they see me and they say, oh, um, uh, what are you doing? They said, oh, I'm just waiting. My friends are at the river and I'm waiting so we go to eat. And they said, ah, okay, so we don't go to bother. <laughs> they actually, I think they think they were naked actually because they said, oh, okay, so we don't go to bother. And they didn't even ask me anything about papers or something. And then they said, okay, we go away, but don't make fire. <laughs> and I said, we're not going to make fire. So you see, yes. Yes. Okay. So open. It's again, so so relative, right? So these these policemen yeah. were so open morality. Yes. yes <laughs> okay. You know, and uh, it's so relative, right? I want to break free from that. I think it's so limited and stupid, you know. While we have so much potency, mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. can live and we can laugh at places where we shouldn't. We can be naked where we shouldn't, and. And especially uh, you have the crazy wisdom thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm not yeah. talking about taking your clothes off yes, in a yes. shopping center. Yes. But if I wanted, yes. I could. You, you see, if I... It would make you famous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's not like I'm not doing because I'm... I have in me the sense of... Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have in me the sense of... Uh, and I walk like this. I am, I am already walking naked. Even if I have my clothes on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and you taught me that, you know, to bring this energy inside. So I can be walking dressed and I am dressed. Like, or I can be walking dressed, but I'm walking naked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, a, it's really about spending time into how this touches consciousness here and and at the same time that we study form, we understand emptiness. And I mean, it's what Buddha said, yeah? form is emptiness, emptiness is form. And that comes so much down to this. Because by studying form, mm -hmm. we talk so much about the, the space and breathe in space. There is only as, as the same space outside as inside. And um, the work we've been doing during this retreat is whatever the horse is biting, jumping, come back to the field. Yes, because field. freedom is actually includes a natural sense of discipline. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I feel, um, I don't know you understand English, but I um, like to be touched. Mm -hmm. About a few things you were saying, it uh, touched me physically. Mm. Yes. Uh, me even make, how you say, a little bit uh, emotional, yes, no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, ladies. Thank you. For, uh, thank you for asking us to do this. <laughs> we can go on and on and on. Yeah? Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so much fun. Oh, it's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. The place is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. so interesting. Wow. Oh, she's excited. I knew it. I could yeah. feel. I could feel their excitation, you know. <laughs> I was like that. These ladies are really... It's very nice for us because... Really, I'm